What's up everyone, it's Wyatt here today making you guys a video showing you how to do an intake heater delete. This applies to all 2001 to 2004 and a half LB7 Duramaxes. So what we're going to be looking at here and replacing with a plug is this piece right up here in the intake uh, right on the Y bridge. So if you can take a look here, kind of hard to see with this camera, the intake heater is right here. The reason we're going to be deleting this is because it is a huge air restriction on the intake of these trucks. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well what happens when I have to cold start the truck? Well good thing is the intake air heater only comes on for emissions. What the intake heater does is warms up the truck before it goes in for an emissions test to warm the air going into the motor. Um, this rarely ever comes on on cold starts so anybody living in the colder climates uh, you have nothing to worry about. The truck will not start any different in the cold. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started getting that POS out of there. All right, first thing we need to do is unhook the power supply from the intake heater itself. So what we're gonna do is take a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench is the easiest way to get to this and just break that loose. What you might have to do is put a seven millimeter wrench down on the bottom nut of this. Sometimes they like to spin in there free, but most of the time you don't have to do that. So we're going to take this power lead off. All right, so now that that's free, uh, your nut won't come off. I don't know why mine just did. I think these clamps just got a little spread out. But anyways, as you can see, we can pull it out here. Here's the power lead. And this nut should be Station down in there like that. I'll have to crimp these clamps back tight around it, but for now we'll just take that out. So now that we have the power lead off, we can just tuck that up out of the way for a minute. What we're going to do next is remove our manifold air pressure sensor or a MAP sensor. And that's just a 10 millimeter nut as well. We're going to pull that out. And then the sensor can just pull out it like that. We can set that out of the way, and the next thing we need to address is finding a socket that will fit this, or a wrench, you know, whatever you have. So what we'll do is we'll pull this out. All right, to remove the intake air heater, what we're going to need is an inch socket. A 27 millimeter socket will also work, but an inch is the correct size for this. So we're gonna go ahead and slide that on there and hook up our ratcheting wrench, or our ratchet, I mean. And it's a left hand, or it's a normal thread, so just lefty loosey, righty tighty. So as you can see, we got that broke loose. Let's go ahead and unthread it. And there's going to be a little O-ring on the bottom of it. Make sure not to lose it. And then just pull it out. So as you can see, how this could be a major air restriction right in the main flow of our motors. So with that removed, what we're going to use is a 2001 Cummins oil pan drain plug. It is the same thread and we will be replacing this with that and it will just block this off. All right, everyone, as you can see, what we were doing over at the drill press was making this little spacer to fit on this plug. Um, what I also did is I reused the little o-ring inside there, the copper washer I should say, that we originally took out. Um, the reason I'm doing this is just because it's a little bit too shallow to sink out in the hole to bottom out to hold pressure. So I had to build these shims just to hold it or to uh, take up some room. Now you might not have to do this but it just depends on the plug you get. Um, if you do have to do this, that's one of the ways you can do it. Just take a washer, drill it out so that it fits, and you should be good to go. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and screw it in. And kind of a pain to get started. But once you get it going, it'll go no worries, no problems. And then what we'll do is just use a 3 8 extension. And run that down flat. You want to make sure that there's no movement in your ceiling of capacity or whatever. You just make sure that it's all bottomed out so that it's not going to be a boost leak. Uh, so now that we got that snug, what we'll do is we'll take a ratchet and we'll just tighten that down and the install will be done. What you will do after that is tape up your 
power unit, um, sending wire, whatever you want to call it, power wire. Just make sure to tape it up because if this ever does come on, it will create a lot of arcage and arcage is not good. So just tape that up, heat shrink it up, do whatever you want to do. And then what you can do is take it, tuck it under here and you can zip tie it onto your turbo hose over here, or zip tie it down here. Just put it somewhere that you're not going to have any issues with it and just make sure that it's covered really well so that you don't have any issues there. Once that's done, what we're going to do is put this boost or this manifold air pressure sensor back in and just a 10 millimeter bolt. You're going to go ahead and crank both those down, get them all tight. And other than that, the install is done. Alright, mod's all done. Let's go ahead and fire up the truck. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of shit all over the side of the truck. It is snowing here in Colorado. But, like I said, this mod does not affect the cold start of your truck. Um, other than that, let's go ahead and fire it up. Go ahead and let the glow plugs do its thing. No issues. You're all good to go. The only thing I'm going to say about this mod that does kind of suck is once you do it, there will sometimes be a check engine light that comes on or it'll throw a code. The only reason it's doing this is because it's part of the emissions control, so they have to have a check engine light for it. Um, if you have EFI Live or an HP tuner, you can tell your tuner or go through the HP tuner and just turn off the code and you'll never have an issue with it again. Um, no other tuners are able to do this. No other tuners are able to turn it off. Not your PPE, not your Edge, um, not your Quadzilla, whatever. They cannot turn the code off. Only EFI Live and HP can. Um, otherwise, you can just clear the code. It usually does not come on. It's only every, it's random. It's really random when the light will come on. But other than that, you guys are all set to go. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, feel free to comment or send me a message of any other mods you guys would like to see. Uh, I'm always looking to do more things to the truck. So, um, that should be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a good day.